like this. Thank you very much for joining and I hope you will enjoy the next 60 minutes. Some words, Thais already has been placing some words about myself, so I will keep it really short and quick for everyone who doesn't know me. My name is Dieter Grübel. I'm born and live in Principality of Liechtenstein as a profession. I'm a simple technician. My special field is the fixed prosthetic. My native language is German or how we speak here in Liechtenstein, the Liechtenstein dialect. A German person will say, you can't speak German. <laughs> yeah, it's a special dialect we speak here and we speak a little bit or I speak a little bit English and Spanish. I work for the company Vuclar Vivadent as a senior manager for global education with the main focus fixed prosthetic here in the headquarter of Liechtenstein uh, in Shan. The city Shan is placed in the heart of Liechtenstein, exactly in the center, what you see here on the picture and the picture you see now for everyone who never have been visiting us. This is our ICD training facility here in the headquarter. I know many of you have been already here visiting us for workshop. Some of you hopefully will visit us in the future. This building is actually the official entrance when you come into the company, Buclar. And in the third floor, we have our training center for technician, for laboratories fully equipped for digital workshop, denture workshops, or ceramic workshops. And yeah, let's hope everybody together that very, very soon we can come back to normal and start to do face-to-face uh, -face workshops again. During this time, we try to keep in touch by you, uh, with you online, and I hope this helped you as well. A brief overview about my professional career, maybe between 1986 and 97, I worked in one of the biggest laboratory here in Liechtenstein. This was also the place I have done my apprenticeship for years as a dental technician. And afterwards, step by step, I start to specialize myself in model casting, then combination denture. And then later on, I start my first touches with metal ceramic and the famous Galvano technique in this time. Between 97 and 2001 was another big step in my life by Ivo Klar. I get the opportunity to work and live in Mexico. First, I work one year in an excellent dental laboratory, again, in the fixed prosthetic area, doing metal ceramic. And there I was also starting to work with metal free ceramic like Empress in Mexico, very strange. Huh? So actually I start to work with Empress in Mexico and I, I worked with composite. And after this year, 99, actually, I moved as a full employee to Ivo Klar Vivadent as an ICD trainer, giving lectures and workshops for Empress Design and Targis Vectris in Mexico, Central America, and whole South America. 2001, the company Ivo Klar ordered me back to Liechtenstein. That was the moment when I started to work here in the headquarter in Liechtenstein still with the special field fixed prosthetic, giving workshops lecture here in Shan, the headquarter. But of course, I'm still traveling until Corona. I hope next year we can start again all ar around the world, holding practical workshops like you see here on the video or theoretical lecture. I miss it already after one and a half year, just being online with you. So I'm really hoping Next year, we can really go back to normal, everyone, and will be a big, big pleasure to meet you again here in Liechtenstein or maybe South Africa. I love to work here in the headquarter first because of the international aspects. I meet colleagues, dental technicians from all over the world. This is really interesting how the people think, how they work. In every country or continent, there may be some little differences between us, the technicians. And another big, big uh, thing I like on the headquarter is the close connection to the research and develop department colleagues, which allows me every time, every month to develop my uh, knowledge about the material and systems we 
offering. And of course, this information I can pass afterwards in my workshop to you, the customer, the user. A big, big thank you now before I start. I want to say to Iwodent, the whole team of Iwodent, to Gary, to Thais, to Paula, the whole organization team, what has been behind, behind this, organizing this webinar. I thank you very much for this to Iwodent, and I think Iwodent as well help you with this organization uh, in a way regarding a continued education process for the moment online. So I have really good remembers to South Africa uh, and I miss it a lot and I hope I can very soon come back to this nice place uh, and meet you in real again. Thank you, I would end and yeah, I hope, we'll, I hope you enjoy the lecture. The topic of today is IPS Emacs Press. And I pick up one special ingot from the whole system, and that is the IPC Express multi ingot. For me, this ingot covers everything what we, the technician, looking for today regarding simple working process, efficiency, high aesthetic, high strength, big indication. Everything gets covered with this material what I think the technician needs today in their daily work. That's why for me, this material or this ingot is really special. And I want to bring this a little bit closer to you from my view, what I think are the benefits of this material. So I split my presentation in three parts. In the first part, we will talk about a very important topic and that's the selection about material and colors. In the second part, I would like to present you the ingot multi and the benefits from my aspects and from my view. And in the third and last part, I want to present you some clinical picture. How does look this material in the patient mouse? So please, Thais has already mentioned it. Uh, any questions you might have during my presentation today, use the chat function send us the question. We can maybe talk about this question directly when you send it in, or we hold it back and we can discuss this at the end of my presentation. So thank you very much for active participating and send your question and it will be a pleasure to discuss uh, your questions during the presentation. So part one, selection of color and material. I think a big, big topic, even after 30 years working with all ceramic materials. EvoClar have been launching 2017 to making this more simple than the application IPS Emacs Shape Navigation app. And I think this is a fantastic tool to select the right material and the right color. But what I could see the last four years talking with dental technician colleagues during my workshops, during my trips, asking about the application, mostly nobody use it. Some have been using it. They download the application. They have done a test once. They couldn't see any benefit for them. They didn't understand the application. They couldn't see any feature about which is valuable and they have been deleted it again. So for me, a big, big pity and that's why I want to really bring this a little bit closer and show you the benefit about using this application. Because our daily work is heavy. We have every day different patient cases in-house, all of them demanding a high aesthetic metal-free ceramic restoration. But the big, big trouble starts here. The base of every patient is completely different. Huh? That means we can have a beautiful tooth color substance. We can have a completely discolored tooth substance that can be from a slight yellow to a dark brown to a very dark black. We can have the issue about lot of space, no space at all. We have the issue about chrome cobalt posts. We have the issue about maybe a titanium implant base covered by zirconium uh, or maybe a titanium base in, in pure form. 
whatever it is, in every patient, we have a completely distinct and individual situation. The patient, of course, doesn't care about this. They are demanding a high aesthetic, metal-free restoration, and they want to have a perfect look. So whenever we have to make decisions, decisions how to get our A2, how to get this color, how to cover this color tooth, how to domain this problem of having no space, because maybe we want to do a non-prep veneer or a minimum invasive veneer is a discolor to substance. What do we need to respect? So when, when we ever talk about oil ceramic restorations and aesthetic, we have always to consider the aesthetic is influenced by several different facts. The first one, you see it here, the first fact, give me a second, I just using here the laser pointer, the first one is definitely the shade and translucency of the selected material. What do, do we use? A high translucent ingot, medium translucent, low translucent, maybe a high opacity ingot. Uh, the material is definitely a big criterion. The second one is a very important one, the shade of the prepared tooth. So many people don't even think about this, especially from the clinical side. Uh, then the layering thickness of the restoration. In the past, we never had to discuss about this because we have just done crowns with a layering thickness, standard of layering thickness of 1.5 millimeter. But today we talk about veneers from 0 0.2, 0 0.3 up to crowns to 1.5. Huh? And the last one is the shade of the cementation material. Yes, even the dentist can influence the color and aesthetic of our restoration, but Whenever we do veneers with a high translucent material, medium, low translucent, in a thickness level between 0 0.2 up to 0 0.7, yes, the cement has a big influence and can change color and value completely. But then whenever we talk about crowns stronger than 1.2 millimeter, having a medium opaque framework inside, then of course the cement has no big influence anymore. Huh? But there is still effect dentist has also impact to the final aesthetic. So what do we really need when we start the clinical case and we have to make decisions about which material we're going to use, which color of material we're going to use, and which working technique? We need three important facts. We need, of course, the natural tooth color we want to reach, A1, A2, B2, uh, a bleach one, we need the shade, the shade of the prepared tooth. Once the teeth are prepared, we take the natural tooth shade guide and with nine different color, the dentist can make a def clear definition. How does look the color of the prepared tooth? And we need done by a diagnostic mock-up, the layering thickness of the restoration. So these three data are absolutely mandatory to control the selection of the right material and color. What more is very important. Any technician needs to understand when he's going to work on his restoration, he's going to finalize his restoration. Whenever it comes to adjustments of color, any technician needs to understand this we can really just reach when we're going to work with our restoration on the natural dye material stumps, which the dentin has been choosing according to the color of the patient teeth. So just in this combination, the natural to, uh, dye material tooth color and our restoration on top, we actually really see which color we're going to end up. As long as we work on the model, which could be brown color, could be yellow, could be blue, could be white, whatever the color will be. The influence of aesthetic to your restoration will be so big that you have actually no clue about the aesthetic you start to creating. Many people start to understand this, of course, so they say they don't use any model. They work without model, without any background. This is still worse because if you miss the background again, you miss the chroma, the color of the prepared tools. Again, you have no clue about the final aesthetic you are starting to create. So talking about the predictable aesthetic result in EvoClar means 
we work whenever it comes to color on the natural dye material the dentist has been choosing after the preparation regarding color. And like this, we are really able in 90 to 95% to deliver to the patient in the first shot, a perfect aesthetic solution. I always say 90 to 95%, because why? Because nobody is perfect. Because sometimes the situation, the clinical situation is so heavy, is so difficult that we have to do it maybe a second time. This is normal. Huh? But when we follow this protocol of working, then you really can be sure that your 95% of cases you can cover and work out in the first touch. So whenever you are in front of this decision of a new clinical case, which material would be best, which color should I take, these uh, three aspects uh, we need to know. Final color we want to reach, uh, shade of prepared tooth and the layering thickness of the restoration, they are very, very important. What everything makes this, the, the whole thing still a little bit more complex is also regarding the history and the development of the old ceramic materials and system during the last 30 years. Because you remember when we started 91, this Empress, uh, and 2005 with Emax, we had just certain materials in a certain opacity and translucency level. Today, we got more different material choices. We got more different translucency levels. And today we have an additional issue. We work more and more on minimum invasive preparation techniques or even non-prep uh, preparation. All these three aspects together make this whole situation about selecting the right material and the right color at the end to get a perfect uh, color aesthetic result more complex. A quick look back, what's the status quo about the preparation guidelines when we're using EPS Emax Press? When we talk about tabletops, we need a minimum space of one millimeter. You remember in the past, we need minimum 1.5. When we talk about veneer, a conventional veneer, we need a minimum space of 0 0.6 up to 0 0.7. And using IPS EM Express gives you the advantage. You can even work out thin veneers, non-prep veneers with a minimum thickness from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Is it pos possible to work even more thin? Some people ask, definitely it is, many people do, but the guarantee of the company of always belongs to this data huh? regarding strength, regarding perfect aesthetic, etc. Regarding crowns, doesn't matter posterior or anterior crowns. In the past, we have been uh, demanding a minimum thickness of 1.5 millimeter. Huh? Today, after 30 years of experience with all ceramic restoration and our material, we could also now even free the indication of making a crown with a one millimeter thickness. What is very important to know for everyone in the team, dentist and technician, but of course more the dentist, whenever we deliver a one millimeter crown, the dentist needs to use an adhesive cementation material. This is mandatory. If I go now back, when we deliver to the dentist a 1.5 millimeter crown restoration, then the dentist has the free choice of a conventional cementation or an adhesive cementation. This is maybe an important uh, aspect when you're going to, to deliver to the dentist a one millimeter crown. So coming back to selection of material and color, because we know this has been so complex, we started in the past with this combination chart to support our customer and make it more simple to have the right choice of material and color. Huh? So with this combination chart on the left side, we could see the nine different natural dye material colors, which improving the prepared tooth color, even a titanium abutment, zirconium abutment, and here on top, we have the 16 A to D colors, even the four bleach colors, which we want to reach. So in a very simple way, I want to have an A1. The prepared tooth color is close to an ND4. 
I just match these two lines. And then here I have the selection and recommendation of the company, which material and which color uh, could I use? You see the blue line, the blue one is always the recommendation of using a HT, high translucent ingot. In this case, there is no recommendation means not possible. LT, yes, it's possible, but we don't use an LTA1. We have to use a LT bleach two, three color brighter than the final color A1. Huh? And here we have MO1 or HO1 when we want to do layering technique. Big problem of this chart has been for a non-experienced technician, he had no clue how this will look at the end. That means he had really to make the whole workflow that he see at the end, does it really work? His recommendation of EVOCLA or didn't it work? So these charts really needs additionally a lot of experience by practical cases doing daily to understand and to make personal decision. Yes, I can follow this or I still have to adapt. Another issue is this chart has been created always by making a single anterior crown 1.5 millimeter strong and always having a nice tooth color inside ND2. So this chart didn't uh, actually respect the aspect of having different uh, space situation, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1.2. And it didn't respect the different uh, prepared two colors huh? in this case. Huh? So uh, this chart was nice, but it was still not helpful enough. So we launched 2017, the IPSC Max Shape Navigation app, and you will see how fantastic this really is. The real clue about this application is that you can create any clinical situation regarding final color you want to reach, space situation, prepared tooth color, and material selection. These four parameters you can set together in any kind of situation and make visible what will be the outcome. And that's the fantastic thing. That means before you even start to work, you know how it will look like. You will understand it will work or it will not work. You can prove it. And that's the fantastic thing about this application. So how does this application look like when we open it? Sorry, I get this in German, but it doesn't matter. I think uh, this is the workflow from left to right, how we work it or we use it. First, we select the dentin color. Here you see all the 16 uh, dentin shades. You can just slide in from left to right to choose a, a certain color. You have even the four bleach colors. Then in a second step, we choose the indication, veneer, inlay, onlay, crown, or a copying in case of layering technique, zirconium, press, whatever. Then we select the prepared tooth color and you've got here all nine colors of the natural dye material shade guide, which you are able to select. You see it is here. And then a very important fact, we can now really make a clear definition about the space we have from 0 0.3 up to 1.5 millimeter. So we really can customize according to our clinical case situation and copy this clinical situation. And at the end, we're going to select the material. Because we have been choosing a veneer and veneer are not indicated for zirconium, zirconium now is blended out, for example. But I can do it by lithium desilicate, could be press or cat. So I'm choosing now press. The software makes immediately a proposal. The best proposal the software know this would be the perfect ingot and the perfect color to use in this situation. Huh? A veneer, final color A1, natural dye material, prepared tooth color is ND5, a quite dark one, space is 0 0.7, and the recommendation of ingot is the multi bleach two. You see again, three color brighter than the final color, but we can see the ingot is really masking the dark color from the prepared tooth. 
And now the game can really start and you really can start to play with this software and say now, okay, this was the, the situation when we have 0 0.7 millimeter. What will happen with the same ingot, the same parameters, if we do this at 0 0.6? The proposal again, multi-bleach too, and still looks good. What will happen when we have just 0 0.5? A proposal is still multi-bleach too, still looks good. What I can see is we're getting more and more chromatic. What will happen if we have just 0 0.4? And then certainly see there is no proposal at all because the software will tell you, in this case, I'm sorry, this is not possible to reach this A1. Any moment you want, the software doesn't make a proposal, you can select by yourself by this free choice button, any ingot you want. So I do it once more and I choose now multi-bleach two again to have a look, how does it looks like? This would be this multi-bleach two in this situation, ND5, a very dark prepared tooth color, 0 0.4 millimeter of space uh, doing a veneer. And this would be the final color result. And now you can really see how is behaving this ingot in the same situation, but having less and less space. And you really start to see the reality and you can see how far you can go. If this would be the situation and you have this situation and you need to reach this A1, of course, then you maybe have to start to think about another material, another working technique that you say, okay, we have this situation. This ingot is not masking good enough to mature. So I will switch to the layering technique and use maybe a medium opaque ingot. And I do a full layering technique. Or I say, this ingot is masking nearly good, but to bring back the value and the brightness, we make a cutback and veneer on top with a brighter ceramic and control like this, the value again. So with this free choice button, I can any moment, also here, I can choose any ingot I want, HT, LT, MT, uh, multi, whatever I like, an opal one, and have a test how we look a certain ingot in this situation. Huh? Imitating the same again, we, have, we want to make a veneer having space of 0 0.4, uh, the same dark tooth color, prepared tooth color, uh, ND5, but this time maybe we comparing different ingots, always taking the brightest one, a bleach one, multi bleach two. This is what we have seen before. LT bleach one, MT bleach two, and HT bleach one. And you see again, you see the big difference of an HT, uh, MT. They are completely too dark. They are definitely through translucent. But the LT or MT a uh, multi they could nearly work. Huh? So you really see, you can create the same situation using different ingots next to each other, and you can really prove which would really the best material for this case situation. The same again, but we give now a little bit more space, 0 0.6, but using the same ingots again, multi-bleach two and HT-bleach one. Here is the HT-bleach one already, working. Here, the HT bleach one at 04 was definitely already an A3. Could you see this? At 0 0.6, uh, the same situation, just 0 0.2 millimeter more, already the HT bleach one could nearly work. MT bleach two definitely would work. And the LT bleach one definitely will work as well. So, this possibility of make visible testing the ingots for me is a fantastic, fantastic situation. And I can just recommend this. Same situation again, this time we have a nicer one. We want to improve a veneer. We want the final color and the A1. We have this time a nice prepared tooth color and the two, the space is 0 0.5. And we just comparing we say, okay, we want an A1, 
we use an A1 ingot, but with different materials, how would they look like? Multi A1, HT A1, LT A1, and MT A1. Again, having this space, having this nice prepared tooth color, I actually can see I could use any of these ingots and making a nice A1, huh? having this situation. Maybe you have the situation, you have no LT at home, you have no multi at home, there is no MT you can use, you have just HT because 95% of cases you do by HT. Again, you can create this case and you can test which of your HT ingot would fit the best. Huh? Same situation, 0.5 millimeter space, a nice tooth color from inside. How would look HT A1? It's nice, but you have to be uh, careful about that this is not turning too dark, definitely. HD bleach two, bleach three, bleach four. Uh, the bleach four is also, it's okay, but also this maybe could turn a little bit too far to dark, but bleach three or bleach two would be perfect in this situation to match at the end the perfect A1. And like this, again, I have just HT at home and I will select, put them next to each other and I will test which will be the best ingot. The same I can do in a crown. I have been creating here a very extreme situation. We want to have an A2, we make a crown. The prepared tooth color is a ND8. You see it's really dark, dark, dark. And we have one millimeter of thickness and we're comparing multi HD, LT, and MT to each other. So where is the proposal? No proposal at all. Again, the software will tell me, Dieter, in this situation, forget it. <laughs> you can't use it. So again, I use the free choice button and I select the ingot I want to use, I want to test. I have done it. I say, okay, I want to use a multi A2, a multi A1, multi A2, both are actually looking very good and masking good. LT the same, I have here an LT A2 and LT A1. Hello? Sorry, there was someone knocking on the door. <laughs> and again, LT A1, no problem at all. LT A2 even looks good huh, in this situation. And or I have maybe an empty at home and I want to check an empty. How is behaving an empty in this situation? One millimeter, a very dark prepared tooth and even the empty ingots masking perfect. Could I take the MTA too? Definitely. To be sure on the safe side, an MTA one would be perfect. To make it really safe, maybe I would take an empty bleach four. The bleach two is not necessary. It's too bright already. And like this, this possibility of imitating, making visible any situation is for me just a fantastic situation. Like you have seen, you have the choice to select different materials, press, cat, even zirconium, according to the indication. I want to make one comment regarding Emax cat. Press and Emax cat are based both on lithium disilicate. So they're supposed to have exactly the same aesthetic because it seems to be the same material. But however, Emax cat, you have to know as a press user, huh? Emax cat is definitely more translucent at the end than a press. So if you use a press A2, the cat A2 is just more translucent. Huh? And this as well, I can demonstrate you just with the software here, have been creating a certain case situation. And here I use an empty bleach to press. And here you see an empty bleach to cat in the same clinical situation. And there you see also, oh, press fantastic. Cat looks nice, but definitely we see cat is more uh, translucent, more chromatic already. So this is also a big, big feature that you can really see. Ah. Could I solve it with the same color using press or cat? Or you, you start to understand cat is different, 
in cat maybe I have to switch one or two colors brighter even uh, to get the same result that I have in press. So for me, the application is really fantastic. For everyone, if you look for it, go to the App Store, search the software, and in the App Store, bring it in IPS uh, Shade Navigation app. The App Store will find it immediately, download it, and then once you have been downloading the software, you have to register yourself. Uh, you register yourself once with uh, your email, if a password, and then log in. And from this moment on, you are able to use it. Then you have different functions and setting possibility. You can change the background of the tools from white, gray to black. You can change the King Giver part with King Giver, without King Giver. Uh, you have different setting options here in this button, for example. Then with the edit button, you can, for example, copy a case situation like this. You don't have to go back and go to the, through the whole process again. You just copy a case and then you open the free choice button and select maybe a different ingot. Like this, you don't have to put in every time new, uh, the same parameters. You do this once, then you copy them, and then you just choose a different ingot. Then you can share this whole information between clinic, laboratory, even the pen, uh, patient and send this per email, huh? for example. So you just push the button, send it per mail or look for the person you want to send it. I will send it now to myself, huh? giving the patient name inside, whatever. And then I get the email, can open it, and the dentist or the dentist send it to you, to the laboratory as a recommendation, get this picture, and you can together afterwards make a decision which material would be the best, because both of you have the pictures in front and see in real what would be the best. You can make also a printout if you work in, uh, on the same spot, clinic and laboratory, just so you can print it out. Uh, it will make really a nice print out, a nice design. There you see first all the individual situations you have been creating. And at the end, you have one picture where all four options you, you have been using it put together, print it out, share it. Uh, so the functions are there and really perfect in my opinion. So the Shade Navigation app, in my opinion, is really fantastic. Use it. Any press user, if you are daily confronted with this problem and you are unsure, you don't know which material would be best, which ingot color should you choose, one color brighter, two color brighter, three, isn't it enough? Uh, yeah, I, in my opinion, fantastic. Guys, have been there maybe some questions until here, which we should really talk about now, or shall I just continue and we talk at the end about? Okay, no response. So I just keep on and going and we will maybe talk at the end. So some benefits about the multi and my, my aspect and view why I think multi is so nice. First at all, any ingot, including multi, when we talk about flexure strength, we have 470 megapascal. So it doesn't matter LT, MT, HT, Opal, or now the multi, you have this 470 megapascal of strength. Fantastic of this multi ingot, it's really the world uh, first and unique uh, multi-shaded ingot you can get for the press technology, and it provides really an optimal combination of aesthetic, efficiency, because of the simple workflow, and strength, what we have seen here, 470 megapascal. When you compare a, a multi to a monochromatic ingot, where does it stay? You see here on the left side, HO, high opacity, medium opacity, low translucent, medium, 
high translucent and the opal one. And here we have the multi. Dentin and incisal. What is the fantastic part of multi? And many people don't know. The dentin part of multi regarding opacity is in between LT and MO, is really somehow in between. That means regarding masking the vital T's, titanium bases, uh, controlling uh, reflection and brightness in the mouse, this dentin is just perfect. And in the, in the incisal area, we have additionally a high translucent incisal material close to an HT uh, and opal material. So this combination of a dentin uh, in between LT and MO with a very good masking effect and a high translucent incisal area is for me the perfect combination. When I have been pressing this material first time ever and I have been finalizing the restoration, uh, adjusted to the model and I did my first picture and I have seen this, I couldn't believe it because the result has been really fantastic. This transition from dentin to incisal, I couldn't imagine this. I thought there will be definitely some clear lines, visible lines I can see between dentin and incisal, nothing. Then the other aspect to have really this body with a very nice reflective and dense dentin a bony dentin, which we always need, but still having a certain own dynamic. And here on the top, a high translucent material. It's really perfect. Huh? So this combination of dentin and incisal for me is really making it so beautiful. What does a customer need when he wants to work with multi? You need one of our four latest furnace generation, can be an EP3000, EP5000 or 3010, 5010. You need this new wax pattern, A, B, the new muffling, the new investment press West premium and the one-way plungers you see here. Why you need this additional one-way plunger? Because of this horizontal pressing, the ingots now are deeper inside the muffle. You see this comparison to a vertical pressing, what we did with a normal ingot, LT, MT, to a multi-ingot, which sits next to the restoration. And to compense this height level, we need this uh, one-way plunger done by investment. Many, many uh, technicians or customers ask, why couldn't you make just one big plunger by aluminum oxide again? Uh, this is a big problem here. We need the investment to control tension in the ceramic. If we would use an aluminum oxide, this tension between ceramic and uh, plunger would go into the restoration and you wouldn't have mind cracks in the restoration. That's why the investment plunger in between. When you see the first time our instruction for use and the workflow, how to position this wax pattern from mesial distal, you see the new muffle base, then you maybe think this is very strange and somehow complicated, not efficient, not economic, etc. But once you have been testing it by yourself, you will see how simple it is. We show this in nice video, how it works in workshops, of course, as well. You see, if you have a simple single crown, anterior, posterior, you take the green wax pattern, place it from mesial or distal, wherever it's better for you. Huh? Put it as much vestibular you can, never place it to the con contact point, huh? always as much vestibular you can. And once you have been placing it by a sticky wax, this orange wax you have seen is the sticky wax, which permits me to move and rotate the pattern as long until I get the, the position I want. And then I just take a normal wax again to close and bond the wax pattern by himself. And that's it. The nice thing is the whole connector is really 100% uh, in intact and intact and you don't impact this area. Huh? Here another situation, you have an abutment solution crown, a screw retained crown, how we want to end that with a full anatomy wax up. You put the wax pattern again, mesial or distal, bond it and ready for pressing. Then you might ask why you have a green wax pattern and a, a pink one. The pink one is for 
tiny restoration like these lower incisal tools because we have less space and we need to we need to reduce the pressure during pressing you see we have here a different design and this design gives us the big opportunity to bring down the pressure during pressing if we wouldn't do this the pressure would be so high that the investment die inside maybe would crack uh, that's the reason why the green and the pink wax pattern so once the pattern has been placed take off the restoration and place this wax pattern is the incisal part downwards directly in these prefabricated slots in this new muffle ring. There are three, four slots where you can place it and just put it in and afterwards you close it by wax manually. They fit really nice, like you see it here on the video, but still we have to close these little gaps which we have to prevent that the investment flow at the end out of the muffle. This is a control guideline instrument where we can control if the object is really perfect placed in position or not. And if you place like this now, just three objects, just close by wax, the fourth uh, slot by yourself again, preventing that the investment material will run out through these spaces. Once this is done, then we are already prepared for the investing. So this new sprueing technique, horizontal from mesial distal, looks very, very strange in the beginning. Also the muffle limited of four crowns, I will talk uh, later on more about this, looks somehow not economic for a press user because you are used to press seven, eight uh, restorations normally in one pressing cycle. Uh, but whenever you have been testing this, believe me, you will see how easy and how economic it is. So we proceed with the investing. We let the material set half an hour minimum. Then we preheat the muffle for one hour and we are ready for pressing. For pressing now, again, Make always sure that the press furnace is minimum already one half an hour to one hour on the standby temperature of 700 degrees to make sure that the muffle is really warm. And then when you have to put the material inside the muffle, first we place the ingot, then the one-way plunger, and at the end, the aluminum oxide plunger. Open the furnace, select the program, put start, and that's it regarding the pressing. I just want to wait one, some seconds more to make one comment regarding the final step of pressing. And I think this is an important one. We know when we start to divest, we have always this reaction layer on top of the surface. To control the reaction layer thickness is very important. Once the pressing is finished like now, take the muffle immediately out from the furnace to bring bring it to a cool down, to a fast cool down. That means no water, <laughs> air is enough. Huh? Please don't use any water, air is enough, but we have to take it out as fast as possible. If you forget the ring inside after pressing, yes, the furnace will cool down step by step, but not fast enough. And what will happen is this reaction layer might start to grow and at the end, you get a much stronger reaction layer than usually. Huh? Many people have experienced this, but they never understood once, why is it once so nice and the other time is maybe much stronger than normal. So this is a little detail and tip beside. So once the cool down is done, then we do the conventional divesting. We place it into the invex. After the invex, we, we sandblast it by aluminum oxide and we are ready for finalizing by staining and glazing the restoration. I mentioned when we use Imexpress Multi Ingot, the investment of choice should be Presswest Premium, our new one. Why this? This investment is much stronger, much tougher. This we need because the pressure forces during this horizontal pressure. Uh, pressing is different than the vertical pressing we do uh, in a LT ingot, for example. Additionally, we have been 
adapting this investment and looking for a better fit, less reaction layer, better surface condition. And the fantastic thing today with this investment, you can use it for conventional and speed heating metals. So you don't need any more two investment types like in the past. You have one and you decide if you use it in a speed or conventional heating method. Additionally, I think a very important part is we have prepared this investment to work in combination with CAT CAM wax or 3D uh, wax material, which comes more and more in our work process in. And these wax types are different than the normal wax we use for waxing up. So this may be the slight uh, intro to the digital workflow. Whenever I work today, a press case, I don't make any more uh, analog wax up. I make everything di digital on the computer. I love today the designing on the computer of my restorations. I love the opportunities the computer gives me regarding designing, using different morphologies by a library, designing, giving texture, giving details. Uh, I love this aspect. It's a clean work, a fast work process, and a very controlled one. Uh, also, the next level, milling the restoration in wax is for me just, I love it because the fitting, the margin fitting, the finishing, the surface texture is just fantastic. Also, the big, big benefit of this cat cam waxes is the firing and melting temperature of these waxes are much higher than a conventional wax. That means the stability during spruing to not deform the restoration, it's much, much higher than using a conventional wax. We use it when we do it analog. So the workflow today, uh, making a press case, a press restoration for me definitely starts the digital way. I scan, I design, I mill it in wax, and afterwards I go into press. Uh, doesn't matter, I use multi or empty, whatever. And like this, it makes the whole workflow completely different already. What I like, Ivo Klar, Vivadent have their own uh, milling units. We have the program mill line, PM3 up to seven. And I love today this multitude of different materials I can use. And one of them is the ProArt Cat Wax Yellow, which we use when we want to do some wax ups. An additional feature in-house of EvoClar is this additional software. We offering the digital press design, press multi software, because with this software, once I have been finalizing my designing, I can actually sprue this multi sprue already in a digital way. And now what I really like to show you by this little video, where you see how I start to sprue this, uh, this wax pattern is. I can place them mesial, I can place them distal, I have to follow certain rules. But what is really lovely, and you see now in the video, is I can actually sprue without influencing the connectors areas. And this is what I love. I don't destroy the connector areas. I can leave them actually in perfect condition. So I love this aspect and controlling. Another aspect of sprueing horizontal from the side is whenever I have done a nice anatomy and surface texture, I don't destroy this. I keep what I have been creating. Whenever I sprue from, uh, from incisal, I will destroy this whole incisal area and I have to mill it afterwards back again. The digital workflow, of course, uh, gives me the possibility to sprue in a conventional way, I take an attachment and I can also put the sprues for an LT pressing, empty pressing in this way. So doesn't matter, I want to do a digital spruing for multi or a digital spruing at the end for a conventional pressing, I will place them and afterwards mill them, restoration together with sprue. And this makes the whole workflow much more simple. You see here the result after milling, here the conventional sprues uh, for an LT or here the multi sprues uh, after milling. 
And the milling results are really fantastic. We have here milling tools with a minimum size of 0.5 millimeters that permits the machine really to bring in such a nice surface texture into the restoration. I love it. And once more, here the restoration with the spruce and you see the spruce don't influence at all my contact point areas. So I can really sprue the restoration that way that the contact point areas are completely intact. Big benefits. Then I place it to the muffle tray and ready actually uh, for pressing, investing and pressing again. Huh? So there is no working time anymore for placing the sprue manually. Of course, another opportunity today is the 3D printing technology and everyone who do a lot of wax, do a, does a lot of press, the 3D printing wax opportunity could also be a big, big uh, benefit to co and complementary product in your laboratory. Because the nice thing is when you start to print comparing to mill, I can complete this platform full with restoration. And it doesn't matter if I print one crown or 30 crown, it always has the same time for printing, one hour. When I want to mill 30 restoration, the machine will mill one restoration by the next. In printing, this concept is different. So someone who is really working a lot with wax, and uh, press technology, the printing technology could really a big, big feature. Big features also offering the software we're using for nesting where you can create automatically a wax tree where the software automatically plays two, three, or maybe four restoration in a wax tree, how we call it. Then you print this whole wax tree in one shape like you see here. And you just take the tree, put it to the ring, and you are ready actually for investing again. This is what you see here. Uh, a lovely opportunity by using the printing technology. What I also love on the printing technology, I use it now more and more since we have our own printer, is the quality of printing is really fantastic. The fitting is incredible. The surface conditions, are incredible, especially what I like when I do, for example, a bridge case like this. If I have done a nice interproximal design like here, this is incredible what the printer does. A milling machine can't do this because even the 0.5 millimeter grinder is too big to finalize the restoration so nicely and beautiful. Uh, this is one feature of the printer for me as well. Then the pressing results, the pressing results like 20 years uh, or more, I'm working now with the material becomes better and better and safer. In the time of M-Press using Felchpad for pressing, this was always like a nervous moment, uh, the divesting part, and you never have been sure how many restoration are safe. Since we have lithium disilicate, it doesn't matter. One crown, 10 crowns, thin veneer, uh, conventional veneer, I have never any issues regarding pressing again. Another aspect you have seen now, our muffle, where we had just prefab four prefabricated slots for putting four restorations. Huh? Yes, why this? For pressing one multi ingot, we can use maximum one gram of wax. And this, if you do full anatomic crown, is really the maximum four crowns. But if I do, for example, a veneer case, they have just half a weight, then I will press six, seven, or maybe eight restoration. I just adding in between an additional sprue by myself. And like this, I press six or seven units with one ingots. So again, this question about economic uh, situation, which many people think you are limited on four objects, no. Four big crowns, yes, more it's not possible because the ingot has one size, one gram you can use. But if you have veneer cases, you can definitely press more. The fitting is really fantastic. Huh? I love it. So the pressing results are really lovely like we used to have it 
in the normal pressing life, what we have done already in the past. And you see, again, I can press big crowns next to thin veneers, conventional veneers to, to each other, and you will see the pressing results are really fantastic. Important again for everyone, quick, a quick talk about the aesthetic. Some people, they will maybe be disappointed when they see the result after pressing in this stage, they say, they look on the color, there is no color at all. Always remember the final color comes with the tooth color from inside and the restoration. And just like this, we get the final color. So be never disappointed when you get in this stage, a situation like this and you think, well, where is the aesthetic? Where is the color? Of course, everything is adjusted like this. So quickly now to end up and show you for, in my opinion, the big, big benefit of multi, maybe comparing to an HT or LT, uh, the next pictures. One case, uh, and I have done it three times, these two anterior crowns, one with multi A1, once with LTA1, once with HTA1. All three materials are nice and according to the indication, perfect, but we need to know the property and then we can really start to select and use them. Here are now these two multi crowns, color A1, and I have been creating by purpose a light shaded tooth color and a little bit a chromatic tooth shaded tooth color to see how does do these two restoration behave on a bright and a dark tooth color behind and how do they look like to the shade guide because we press A1. Right? Here you see now our multi A1 pressings against the HT A1 pressing. And you already, you see, wow. Huh. The HTA1 on the bright tooth color from inside maybe looks not bad, but it looks already somehow grayish, dark, missing color, missing chroma. Huh? The dark tooth color substance from inside has been already pushing so much chroma inside, it has been really already getting too dark. So HT is really a fantastic material. But if I want to reach an A1, I have to maybe press definitely an HT bleach three or an HT bleach two uh, to compense this situation and uh, to control this situation uh, of high translucency of this material. LT, you see here the LT ingots, again, next to the multi. The LT is definitely already more opaque, more chromatic, but somehow here the dentin is good, but look on the incisal, it's somehow dead. Huh? Why this? It's a monochromatic material and has the same level of chroma and trans, uh, translucency all over the restoration. Huh? It's one material. But the brightness level, the masking, we have definitely reached. But look again, the multi, it's completely different. Look on the brightness even here on the dark, on the bright one, even on the dark tooth color, we have still a nice brightness, a good masking and a good uh, adjustment to the shade guide. This again, the HTA1 next to the LTA1, and you see this behavior of an HT uh, get immediately dark, uh, get immediately grayish, and in, whenever you use HT, you have really to work with a very high and strong uh, color compension. That means you have always to split, to switch to definitely two or three color brighter than the final result you want to have at the end. Huh? LT is better, good masking, good color, but to bring that back dynamic and translucency, we need the cutback and the layering technique again. Huh? The multi for me like this is really a perfect uh, situation of a good bony dentin with a high translucent incisal. Doesn't matter bright tooth inside, dark tooth, we have a good masking, a good brightness level, and we still have a nice translucency from inside and makes our job more simple. I want to have an A1, okay, I take multi A1. I don't have to think a lot about and I will get it. 
Uh, here in these tools, in this to in HT, I have to think a lot about compensing brightness. Here, yes, I can take maybe A1, but I have definitely to go to the layering technique. By staining, it will be complicated to bring in dynamic. Uh. So the multi ingot like this, comparing to the others, maybe I could show you a little bit the difference between an HT, LT. I could even take now an MT as well. Uh, has really a special power in my opinion. And, and this is what I really love. Here you see the three materials again, uh, each other and the multi for me has the perfect touch of brightness in combination of translucency. And again, I want to work simple. Wax up, pressing, staining, glazing. Huh? That's the concept. That's then the final case. And I do some uh, staining and glazing. He had a short video I have done maybe last year, just how you can modify very fast in a simple staining, uh, a multi-restoration like this and bring it to a nice, nice uh, aesthetic result. Of course, when I want to do an interior case like this, then you definitely, I do this in several firing steps because just when I do this, I get homogeneous color situation. Huh? That's important to understand. So also when you see now my video here, this video I have been done in several firing steps. Huh? adding color, fixing the colors and adding color again. And like this, step-by-step step, making grow the aesthetic. Here I took some bleach color just to show a little bit how I can modify even a bleach base to a nice chromatic translucent uh, or dynamic restoration in a very simple way by using just some stains. And again, huh, that's the target make it really simple, efficient, fast, having the right material for it, which permit it. Uh, and this multi for me, this combination, dentin, high opacity, high brightness, good color, and the incisal part, high translucency is in my opinion, really just fantastic. So you start to see how by the staining technique, really the two, the two start certainly to get his own life and his own dynamic huh? in a very simple way. And I just see now looking on the, on the time, I have to speed up now. That's it. That's maybe a final picture. Just a little bit stain, a little bit glaze on this A1, uh, and you see how dynamic this material certainly turns. I really love it. Uh. That's why for me, HT material is nice, LT is nice. LT has a good masking, but needs quite mostly actually the layering technique. HT is as a perfect translucency, but it's too much quite often, and I need to play a lot with compensing colors. To, to control this problem, multi is the perfect intermediate. Huh? Like I told you, I love this material for abutment solution situation, like you see here in a full anatomy way. Wax up, press it, stain and glaze it. And simple like this, making two full ceramic restoration, once on a titanium base and next to a veneer, top. The masking of the multi of the titanium base in combination of the cementation is just perfect. I can do it also as two steps in a screw retained way. And again, having here an MO, and at the end, we place some multi on top by staining and glazing. Of course, I can still make it more beautiful. Uh, it's just fantastic. That's it. And at the end, maybe just going uh, three minutes through some live patient uh, cases that you see how this material behave in the mouse. The concept is wax up, 
pressing, staining, glazing, like you this, see in this case, for example, complete bleach case, definitely not a lot of shades, but it looks just fantastic. Huh? Another case which we have done like a first try ourselves many years back uh, with a working colleague for anterior crowns. She had some metal ceramic restoration placed. We did a wax up and then we press it and uh, stain and place it. This was the uh, initial situation of her metal ceramic crown. And this was the final result after pressing, staining and glazing. And when I have seen this at the end on her uh, in the mouse, I was really just smashed again, how nice this material looks. And you see again, this dynamic of the illustration, they looks really close to the nature. It's incredible. Uh, I, it's sometimes you really can't believe how this material behave. Uh, and that's why the multi for me is really fantastic. Uh, for her, she needed also a posterior crown, in this case, an implant. Uh, we have done it also by multi, wax up, pressing. And you see already the fantastic thing on the multi in a posterior tooth, you get in the occlusal, do the incisal you want. You will never get buccal or palatinal here, some incisal. You get all the incisal in the occlusal area, stain glaze it. Cement it with the multi-link hybrid abutment cement, which we offer, and you get the perfect bonding. And then this just screw it in and ready the, the restoration. And it looks really just fantastic. This crown has also already several rears in the mouse and never any problem. Not in the aesthetic, not in the function. Uh, it's just fantastic. Another case for anterior crown on disc, working colleague from us. This time we have done a small micro layering because of course, there is also the possibility that you do slight cutbacks, slight layering and bring even more dynamic into the restoration like you can see here. And I really love it. Also these restorations are now definitely three years, three years in the mouth of him. And uh, he's just completely happy since them and they look just Fantastic. Another case from also a working colleague of mine, uh, four anterior three quarter crowns. We have done them also with a little cut back. You see this, we have brought in a little bit more dynamic by translucency, mamelons, uh, and they look and behave again, just fantastic. Uh, really lovely. That's it. Sorry, I have been quick uh, rushing through now very quick. Uh, I think in the beginning with the introduction, we, we have been maybe spending some 10, some 10, 15 minutes. That's why now I'm apologize if I'm now 20 minutes over the time. And yes, I really hope you enjoy. I say thank you from my part. I also want to say thank you to the Ivo the team, uh, to Gary. Uh, and yes, whenever you're looking for more information, go on our homepage, look on our academy. There we have many, many uh, videos, uh, webinars, which we are now offering in an on-demand situation. And yeah, you have much more, or we have much more information for you. You can really see directly. And like this, I want to open maybe at the end Final discussion, question, answer. If you have still some question, uh, would be nice. Oh, Gary, I just see you. Big, yeah. big pleasure to see you. <laughs> big pleasure to see you. Uh, so yeah, many great. Thank you. I just want to say from my side, that was fantastic. And we want to start doing more of these, you know, um, on a monthly basis and that. And it was absolutely amazing and fantastic to see you as well. Thank you, Gary. Thank we've, you. Uh, we've all been hiding away on this side. So we, we certainly want to get you down to, to South Africa and Cape Town. I'm looking you know, really forward soon. to come back. I miss, I miss it. I miss you. And uh, yeah, would be so nice to be back and, and uh, share again with you together sometime. It'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Are there, are there any questions or anything out there?
everybody. I see the here silence. the. I see here in the chat function, is it possible to speed heat uh, 3D printed resin with the Presswest Premium? Yes, I tested it. I tested it in the speed version and conventional version. Also with our wax, huh? with our printing wax, with the Presswest Premium and it works very well. I didn't use another wax from another, uh, material but our wax definitely works huh? then when doing multiple restoration with different natural dye shades underneath should the dentist then use different cement to achieve a uniform shade or will one cement be sufficient to achieve the optimal aesthetic it's a very good question, of course. Having different natural tooth shaders underneath. The idea has been that we try to control this to 90, 95% already. And then if a dentist see, okay, tooth one one is a little bit much, too much yellow huh? <clears throat> and we need a little bit more brightness, of course, then I just take for tooth one one, maybe a little bit of brighter cement. So the dentist can really act individually uh, according to each piece and that we can test by the try in paste uh. first we test which material would be the best a white one a brightish one a chromatic one could be to the yellow direction to the brown direction whatever and then we do the cementation so definitely a big yes sometimes is needed that tooth one one needs a bright cement and tooth 21 maybe needs a chromatic one. Can happen, definitely. Thank you, it's a good question. Can I see still another one? No, actually, I can't see. Ah, final strength will remain same for 0 0.7 restoration up to 1.5. Uh, has a restoration in a thickness level of 0 0.7 up to 1.5, the same strength? Yes. As I mentioned in the beginning, when you have been talking about the preparation guideline, as long as we are staying in this preparation guideline and minimum space situation, uh, going now to the scene veneer with 0 0.3, uh, millimeter, then we keep the strength we're looking for. Of course, we can make mistakes as technician where we give a bad treatment to the ceramic by overheating, overstressing, and be reducing, for example, the strength. Or a dentist can make a mistake by over etching the restoration. That's quite often happened that many dentists over etch the restoration because they take a too heavy uh, uh, etching material. Evoclar has 5%, other competitor materials are stronger, eight, 9% uh, strong. Then they over etch the material, they take out too much glass and certainly the restoration becomes weak, huh? can happen. So originally, it doesn't matter if the restoration is 0 0.7 or 1.5. Yes, you got 470 megapascal, but the impact and influence maybe of a technician side, but also on the dentist side can modify and change these facts. Right. Yeah, I think uh, more questions I at the end, I can't see here, at least at the chat. So, I say thank you very much for joining to everyone. And I'm uh, really looking forward that we meet each other again, maybe here in Liechtenstein, for me still better in South Africa again. I say big hello to everyone, a big hug to everyone, stay healthy. And yeah, I really miss you. And I hope I can come back soon again. <laughs>